Welcome back, everybody, to uh, Chaos Arts and Crafts with Melissa and Jen. Hello. Greetings. So now um, some of you may have already finished the first project of painting the, your uh, canvas with some things from nature. So again, this project is going to involve some nature things. So this one, what we want you to do is take a walk down to the creek. Um, if you don't feel comfortable going on your own, feel free to take a friend with you and bring back a rock that'll fit in the palm of your hand. Okay? You don't want it extremely big, but you don't want a little tiny one either for this project, okay? So uh, bring it back up here to the pavilion. And once you do that, I want you to find a colored cafeteria tray and put your rock on there. This tray is gonna help you keep track of where things are. It's gonna provide you with some contrasting colors so that things just aren't all over the tables, all over the place. And we have friends who are struggling to find things, okay? So the first step in our rock painting thing is we're going to put a base layer of white paint all over the rock. So we are going to go ahead and get started, right, Melissa? Let's yep. start painting our rock Let's white. Paint the rock. Go for it. Get in. And try to keep all your brushes and your messy things on your own tray. Uh, no need to make a friend's space yucky and wet. Nobody likes to stick their hand in wet paint. Um, or their shirts or anything else. So let's just keep our mess to ourselves and keep it on our tray as mine is demonstrating how drippy it can be. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> drip, drip. And it doesn't matter what size brush you use really guys on this one. Um, I don't have multiple brushes yep. around. You have all kinds of brushes around, feel free. Um, make sure that you don't get gobs of paint because then that'll take forever to get your base layer dry. And then you could be waiting two days to finish your project. And you don't have that much time, so keep the layers kind of thin. Give it a good one. And feel free, the trays are meant to have paint on them. It's okay. So if you need to flip your rock over and do the underside, feel free to get your rock. Uh, well, actually, feel free to get the tray messy. <laughs> You know, rocks have lots of little edges. Yeah, a lot of nooks and crannies. And some of you may have picked your rock not based on what it looks like, but what it feels like. So for those of you who did that, I should have told you this before, but if you haven't painted it yet, feel what your rock is like before you put the paint on it. And then when you're all done with this project, take note of what it feels like after you've added the paint to it. And I bet you're going to give me different answers when you're done. Alright, so I've got the top, bottom, and sides. And, you know, for this project and this base coat, if you missed a spot here or there, no big deal. But you do want to have a pretty good covering of your rock. You know, there might be, if you're curious to know, I'll be honest, I don't know a whole lot about rocks, but I bet maybe some of our out of sight ambassadors or some of our volunteers or even your parents might be able to tell you a little bit more about what type of rock you have, whether it's sandstone or whether it's, see, I don't even know another word to use right now. So, so you don't want to ask me this one, okay? Stone. There you go, limestone. Mm. Quartz. Mm. Yeah. So if you're curious, find somebody uh, to answer that for you. Probably before you paint it. There again, yes. should have told you that before, huh? <laughs> you can't really see it afterwards. No, you can't. So I'm thinking mine's pretty coated, Melissa. How are you doing? I'm good. Alright, so we're gonna definitely let this sit. If you are doing this at Chaos and at the Pavilion, what I would suggest you do is find a place around the Pavilion edge where the sun's coming in pretty hot and heavy, and that'll dry things up a lot quicker for you. All right, so for now, Melissa and I are going to go clean out our brushes, and uh, we will be back. All right, welcome back, everyone. So our rocks are pretty much dry for all intents and purposes for our demonstration here. 
So what everyone will have the opportunity to find is a paint palette. It's white and plastic. But what's really cool about this paint palette is if you hold it horror, uh, vertically, yeah, let me get my directions here. But if you hold it vertically, it is actually the same as a braille cell, okay? So you have six places to put different color paints and you have one, two, three down the left side, four, five, and six down the right side. So when you ask somebody to pour your paint colors into your palette, ask them to make sure that they tell you the dot configuration for each color. So for example, Melissa has out here some metallic blue color, and I would ask her to put that in dot one for me so that I would remember that my metallic blue is in dot one. So what we're gonna do next is we're, after we fill and decide what color paint we want, we're going to add some more color to our rocks and we will be back with step number three. So stay tuned. All right, welcome back everybody. So Melissa and I added some additional colors to our rocks and it is, um, because there's a lot of layers of paint, it's gonna take them quite a bit to dry. So make sure you put yours out in the sun so you can finish this last step. So we're gonna take a rock that has not been painted and show you how to complete the last part of this project, okay? So on the tables, you are going to find um, various colors of craft wire. And you're going to wanna to cut it, what do you think, Melissa, 12 inches in length approximately? Yeah, that's about 12. Yeah, about 12, it doesn't matter. Size isn't everything on this one, you know, take a random shot, but long enough because what you're gonna do, I'm gonna take the rock in my left hand and I'm gonna kind of hold the wire in place with my two fingers on the back side of the rock. And with my right hand, I'm gonna take the remainder of the wire and I'm just gonna twist it around one, two times, about two and a half to three times. Yeah, we can get a third one on there. Three times around your rock and you wanna make it snug but you also don't want it to be stiff, okay? A little snug so it doesn't come off. And once your paint's really dry, you'll be able to position this a little bit better. So now, you've got this little guy of uh, wire hanging up here at the top. Question is, what do we do with that? So Melissa, do we have a paintbrush uh, handle over there? Maybe one of the sponge ones? Oh, sure. All right. There so we go. what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the remainder part of this wire and I'm gonna take the end that is furthest away from the rock and I'm gonna start wrapping it around. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna actually take the paintbrush about the middle and I'm gonna start wrapping that extra wire around the handle of the paintbrush and then I'm just gonna spiral it down a little bit. And then pull out the paintbrush and what I'm left with is a little spiral at the top. Now the really cool thing about this is, so we've got our rock, we've got our, we painted it, we have the wire wrapped around it, and now because we have this little curly cue, we can actually side a picture right down inside the middle of that curly cue. So when you take your rocks home, print out your favorite photo from camp. Um, you could have somebody maybe write a description about it on the back side of it in large print for you, or you can even have a little braille label to put on that photo as well and then just stick it in there and you've got a memory from the chaos weekend of 2021 so this wraps up arts and crafts with jen and melissa for chaos 2021 have fun guys